Okay, Amanda, let's take a look at what I came up with for you. I got actually a couple of different examples of things we can do. One of them I like a lot more than the other. So here is your site, and I have it set right now so that it's 1,024 pixels wide. If you look in the upper right-hand corner, as you can see, the, uh, the numbers change up there. As I come back down, oops, a little too far, about, about right there. So close enough. The What this is, is uh, at 1,024, that's generally what you would see on an iPad. So I always like to test everything on iPad size to see how it is, see how things are moving around. Let's see if I can get me out of the way here on the least important thing on the screen. Um, so we, we see this, um, things have sized down some, this has moved around this gal in the middle, she got shrunken up, but we'll come back to this and make it bigger in a second. And then here is one of my versions of it. We kept the, uh, the woman in the center more full height. And then here is another version of it where I don't have the other image put in here. So let's, uh, let's take a look then. Uh, let's go back to yours and let's kill the inspector and make this more full width. So you see she came down quite a bit in size. And then uh, let's do the same thing here. As we change that, though, these pictures, they all stay exactly the same. Now I'll show you that again. It's as we come across here and size things down. The important images stay stay the same size so i think that's probably important on a site when you're using uh, photography so let's uh, take a look at this page and as we shrink things down you're going to see the images start to change in size so then let's look at the third version of this and we will kill this and you will see again that she stays the same size so let me show you how this works. In the group, there were people talking about um, different ways to put things together. Let me kill a bunch of stuff here. Come on. Yeah, all right, let me just reload the page. And one of the suggestions was that you could come in and you could make one section only, like let's say a third wide, and then you make another section two thirds wide and then try to put them next to each other. And what that is known as is that's known as a float. So let me show you how a float would work. And it's not the best way to do it. And most coders will tell you not to do it this way. So I have one section here and another section down here and I change their size by coming into the CSS and saying I wanted one to be a 33% and the other one to be 67%. And then what we're going to do is we're going to tell them we want them both to float left. So we can have them both float left. And then what it'll do is it'll pull that section, the first section over to the left. It'll have a whole bunch of extra space to the right where then this one will naturally come up into it. But you see what one of the first problems we have here is now we got another section below it that then also wants to come in and take up this space. So although you can do it like this, generally speaking, you don't want to use floats because you can see the section down here, the actual top of it is, is this line up here. So that's why we don't want to use a float. So in the case up here then, let me actually just turn that CSS back off or it's going to cause me a problem. So in this section here, what I did was, let me undo something here. Kind of similar to what you did, but I did it with a section instead of with an image. And so I created one section up here at the top and I made, I just, you know, mocked this up on the left-hand side. And what I did was I set this to be sticky on top or to top on scroll. Then I made a second section down here with the logo. And uh, again, I put the column, the background image for the column is this woman in the center right here. And I can increase the height if I were to need to. So um, 
so we got that there. And then all I did is I put in a negative 565 pixels. And so that pulls it all the way up to the top. So then let's save this. And we don't need to um, reload it because I didn't change anything. But the problem I have with this is besides, well, first off, I don't like really big negative margins like that if you can avoid it. And I'll show you how to avoid it. The other thing is when you scroll, this thing over here, it always kind of wants to pop up and down a little bit. And that just kind of bugs me, uh, especially when there's a fix to it. So let's go and take a look at another option we have. So this is the, the one that I built that I liked. And you're going to see as I scroll, don't worry about this down here. You, you won't have this on yours. Uh, but as you scroll, this does not move at all. And then we also have the one image over the other. So let me show you how that works. And we will kill that. And we will kill the CSS for now. Okay, so what we have is we have two image, we have two sections here. And right now one is sitting over the top of the other. So let me undo that to begin with. So now we have this section down here and this section up here. So this is the way you would build it. So again, we take our column and we make the uh, image, the background for that. And so we have our image right here for that. Always make sure you set it to no repeat. I had one set to parallax before and I couldn't figure out why it was taking up the entire screen, but you always wanna make sure it's no repeat. And then in the CSS, let's take a look at what we have there. So now you're gonna see duplicate CSS selectors here. And it's because uh, these are CSS selectors for this section and then this section below it. I just kind of cloned this up here. So you're only gonna have one CSS ID selector. But what we did with that image in the center is I say background position top. So we want, want it to be affixed to the top. You could do center, right, bottom, all over, but we are doing the top. And I said background size of cover. So it's going to cover the entire area that it has available. And we gave the image a height or we gave the column a height of 700 pixels. So therefore the image will be 700 pixels tall as well. So that's how we have that. And then we have just our image over here to the right. Now, how I put this image in is this image is actually an image inside of this center column. It's not in the right hand column. It's in the center column. And so let's go into our CSS and actually let's just do a couple of things here. We'll just kill some of the CSS for real quick. So this is what it's gonna look like when you set it up. You're gonna put that image in the background of the column, then you're gonna come in and you're just gonna create another image right here in this second column. And then you're gonna go in and you're going to put in your background settings for the column. And that will give you this with the image sitting at the top where it should be because all all elements that you put into a column are going to want to float up to the top. And then we will come in with the CSS for this image. And what we're saying here is we want the positioning to be absolute. And what that means then is we can position it based upon the element that it's sitting inside of. So we want to have it be negative 70 pixels from the bottom. So we'll see this here. So it pushed it down 70 pixels below the bottom. And then we're going to make it go 225 pixels to the right. So it's a negative 225. So it takes it all the way over here, 225 pixels to the right. And then what was the last thing? I guess I had a border around it. So we have a border. And that is there. Up here, I just uh, kind of mocked up what you had done, put in negative 50 pixels, I think, on that image just to get everything to line up here. But then here is the real trick to all this. Because everything else we did here, we would have done over in this one as well. 
But here's the real trick, and it's all big whopping one line of code, and it is right here. We say position fixed for this top section. And when we fix the positioning of this top section, what happens is because there's room in here, everything below it, the section below it, is going to come slamming up right here into place. So we'll just uh, knock off those two slashes. And that's what we get. Because there's nothing in here, there's nothing to keep this from moving into that position. Just like we had with the float before, the float wants to move into the other position. But in this case here, nothing else will come up over the top of it. It will just because this is fixed, this will move into the empty space and then it looks great as far as I'm concerned. So let's uh, just take a look at this again. So everything scrolls up nicely. This stays in place, doesn't jump around at all. And like I said, the entire coding besides, oops, wrong one, the entire coding besides what we would have done for the other one with the negative 565 top pixels is just to put in this line right here. So that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Have a great day.